Hey everybody, it's Nick Z here. Uh, we are back with another student question. Um, a student asked, uh, how do I control fast double kicks? Um, meaning that, you know, when he has a single kick going, dum, 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 it sounds amazing. It sounds like you want it, it to sound, I'm assuming. And uh, then when the double kick comes in, it probably sounds like hot ass because it goes, is <laughs> how uh, fast double kick sound if you don't treat them, but worry not today. I'm going to show you how to treat them So let's go right over to the dog. All right So I wrote you a little ditty uh, Thanks for that because I actually kind of like the rhythm that I wrote for the first bit. I don't even know if I, I maybe not the second bit, but uh, First bit is good, but let's get a quick lesson and I uh, purposely made the kick uh, a little bit more low endy and obnoxious then i you know then then it came out um these are midi drums that i printed but anyway listen let's listen to it real quick i just looped it it's just a loop of a uh, couple measures so check it out Right, so even though that kick is obnoxious and it's it's really low end heavy, I mean, so I'm on headphones now with no sonar works, um, and I mean, this was a mess when I had like the room treatment on uh, when I was when I was initially making this, like it was it was a mess, uh, and it it sounds ten times more a mess than I have don't have the room treatment on, but uh, it was a mess to begin with, but yeah, you can hear it. Uh, when the kicks get fast. That's just hot garbage. So, how do we deal with that? How do we handle that? And the reason that I wrote the rest of this is so we could have a little bit of context or whatever. I don't want to just play with double kicks. Um, I wanted to show it to you in context, in the reference of a song. Like, obviously, I'm not going to, you know, write the whole thing out. But again, I'm going to like this little ditty I wrote. I'm into it. It's going to turn into something. Uh, so I wrote out these MIDI drums was the first thing that I did. Uh, and to do that, uh, just very quickly, if you're curious, I just, I have a, a get good, uh, template that looks like this. This is obviously the mix template, but, uh, the get good template is like this. I don't know. I found it on YouTube somewhere, like how to route this, uh, properly, but this is all routed the correct way. So. What I do, and this is the way I always do MIDI drums, if I have to do something with MIDI drums, um, usually I use uh, Get Good. I use Get Good for anything, uh, you know, because the shells are so good, everything's so good on it that uh, and so clean that you can manipulate it and move it in any way you want, or just, you know, uh, trigger it. But I've used this for like light rock stuff and it comes out amazing. Uh, so this template, just from here to here is like if I was to write some MIDI on here uh, it would all come in routed correctly the kick would come in here and the kick sub would come in here and the kick sample uh, blah 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 for everything here uh, and then I just print them I select them all uh, and I go to render freeze track and I go to a stereo stem I go to a stereo stem because uh, a lot of the stuff uh, is stereo when it when it's supposed to print like FX symbols, um, ride, floor toms and stuff like that, like or, uh, uh, the toms, they're already in the stereo field. So like I just print them to stereo and, and leave it. Um, but like overhead left, overhead right, obviously those go to mono, um, which I didn't do. There I left them stereo. So I'll show you how I make a mono. And here's the rooms. I'll make all this mono. So this item settings, uh, and we're in Reaper, obviously. And just uh, mono. Then you can do down mix, left, right, whatever. X down mix, whatever. So, and then I obviously just plugged them right into my routing template that's in the course um, uh, that I hope you guys have watched. If you haven't, I hope you do. Uh, and this is all my stuff going on here and again like you don't need all these kicks and all of this nonsense but this is the 
the stuff that comes with Get Good. Uh, anyway, I don't know why I'm doing a commercial for Get Good. It's kind of hilarious. Um, but whatever. Uh, but like, there's the kick, which is the kick in and out. Uh, the sub, or the sub rather, which is the sub of the kick, and then the kick sample, which are the three tracks that make up the kick for that. But I didn't use any of them. I just sampled it. Um, and then I wrote a quick, uh, you know, couple guitar parts, and that's all for Nameless with uh, Jens Borgens, IRs, which are nice. So now that that's out of the way, um, let's get into it. Get rid of this. All right, so first things first, coming over to the kicks, I don't need all of kick stem, kick sub, kick sample. I don't need that because I'm triggering it. So I'm going to get rid of these real quick. And then this is just, this kick track here just has my uh, fab filter on it because it's easier to just drag it over if I need it than to go searching for it. Oh my God, I hit the space bar. Uh, and that's all that is. So let's get into it. So the first thing, there's a couple of ways. I think I'm going to show you, I'll show you a couple of different ways of how I would tackle this. Uh, first, I'll show you how I wouldn't tackle it, which is, this is a way to do it, but in a situation like this, I wouldn't probably do it. But sometimes uh, this is a good way to do it. So I'm going to solo these kicks so we can hear them. And holy shit. And I'm going to rinse, repeat this part all the way through. Uh, so that's on repeat now. And I'm going to go over to C4. So the first way that you can deal with uh, when you have fast kicks, and the reason that I have this on a loop right now is because uh, I, I just want to deal with the, the 30 second note kicks. Like if you're dealing with um, a band that's playing 30 second notes all the way through, like some kind of black metal project or something, like, you know, this is, this is what I want to talk about. Um, but it's contextual, which is why I wrote the rest. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these bands and just come to here. And this is at 92, so I'm gonna lower it. I'm gonna lower it to like, just under where I would want the kick fundamental to be. So I want the fundamental, fundamental, fund, I said fundamental, which is a good route name. Uh, where the, the fundamental would be is around, I don't know, probably 50, 60. So I'm gonna go just under that. Uh, and use this, this, this C4 is a multiband compressor. You can use any multiband compressor you want, but uh, C4 works just fine by wave. So I'm just gonna use that. Uh, and I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna AB it. So I'm gonna turn it off and turn it on. So it's just pulling out a little bit of that sub. Um, and now in context, and what we're listening for is the marriage between the slow kicks and the fast kicks. So. And that's with C4 on. That actually works shockingly well um, for this uh, example. Um, cleans them right up. So maybe I would do that in this example. But, you know, this is why we have many different ways of doing things, because maybe on this particular song, this method of cleanup would work really well, and on others, it's not going to work at all. Um, but this seems to be cleaning it up nicely, so let's listen again. It's obnoxious. And nice and contained, at least in my headphones, which are we already uh, talked about. But the the trick for this is to go just below the fundamental. So where did I say I was? This is at 40, 40 hertz. And this is grabbing everything at 40 hertz and attenuating it um, by about 6 dB. Uh, and I didn't touch any of these um, settings. Uh, maybe there's a better way to set that up. I don't know but it sounds great uh, but it's it's acting like an electro 
Well, let me try it in an obstacle, actually. See if that works better. No, I think the electros, whatever this is, is fast enough to uh, catch it quickly, um, which is what we want. So that's happening. So that's the first way to deal with fast double kicks in a song uh, quickly and easily. Because, again, like you want to do this quickly. You don't want to be playing around with kicks. Like if you're trying to shape your kick and, like, you know, mix it and whatever, like you don't want to start messing around with, uh, you know, when you get kick noise like if you have a really nicely shaped kick like this for example you don't want to start messing with it when the fast kicks come in um there's lots of songs that i do and that i listen to uh that have these two different kinds of drums you know it'd be like a black gay song where it has you know a lot of uh these fast 30 second notes and then uh you know it'll diverge into a part sort of deaf have any word it'll you know get really uh ambient and it has single kicks and you know it's a good trick for keeping that energy up all right so the second way that you can do this um is to cut these kicks out cut them right out uh so i added another track here and uh i cut these out off screen um which is just, you know, slotting him and, you know, hitting S. Oh, man. And now i got to re-highlight him again. But anyway, um, so I'm just going to cut these out and move them to another track. So I have my kicks here. Or rather, my single kicks here. And then when I had that really fairly fast double bass, it's not a completely different track. Now I can treat it any way that I want. Um... And the trick is to try and make it so that you're not really noticing a difference in the kick. So the only thing to do with this is to, so before I had the trigger, oops, before I had trigger on the bus here, on my kick sum. So I'm summing everything together uh, and I have my trigger here. So really quickly, I just wanna bring them to the individual tracks, which you could argue it was something I probably should have done to begin with, but it doesn't matter. It's six and one half dozen or another but now i have these triggers and eqs i added this eq this ridiculous eq uh to try to accentuate the point of a loud boomy kick um so that's why that eq is here post uh trigger uh but now i have a completely separate track that i can work with so i have the kicks are exactly the same And there's no drop off in the track or anything like that. I just moved it down. Um, so let me go to another EQ. Could have just grabbed the one next to it, which I probably should have, but whatever. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that I can uh, do this now. Um, the second way to attack this, once you've moved the track over, is just to attenuate it uh, here. And you can do it dynamically if you want which I'm going to do just for good measure, just to show you. So uh, Pro-Q3 has a, a dynamic function on it right here, this little circle on the outside. Um, so I have a, a dynamic EQ, which is very similar to a compressor um, in a lot of ways. It's, it's going to react dynamically uh, rather than, or react to the dynamics that are occurring rather than um, uh, just a straight EQ cut. But I'm going to show you, hang on, bear with me a second. So, right, so I'm grabbing below the fundamental. This is a little bit further down, but this is just the, the apex of the cue. You know, I'm still getting all of this. I just pulled it down a little bit further because I don't want this uh, slope grabbing the top. And I mean, I, I could narrow the cue, but I don't want to really mess with it too much. I'm just trying to give you an example. 
Um, but that's one thing I could do. So now these kicks are, are very similar in sound. But when I get to the fast double kicks, it's not obnoxious. Uh, it sounds good and tight the same way that this one is, and it's almost like tricking the ear. But truth be told, I don't have to do a dynamic EQ uh, because um, really the reason to have dynamics on the track before is that we were working with, uh, for this example, two very different kinds of kicks, single kicks or, and, you know, these um, eighth note or 16th note. I mean, that's relative, I guess. It'd be 16th notes. Um, these these single no, single kicks, 8th note kicks, 16th note kicks, and stuff like that. But when we got up to 30 seconds, it got obnoxious and started piling up. So to deal with two different things, you have to have uh, dynamics on because you have to let one play through and the other change. But when I'm just on this track that only has these kicks, uh, I don't have to do it dynamically. So I can literally just cut it right out of the signal. Uh, and I can go, we decided, I don't know, try it at like 40. I don't even know where the, the fundamental is on this kick. Let's find it, actually. Yeah, it's right around there. Nice, big, fat fundamental. Yeah, so we're right below it, and we're cutting it out. It lets us see how it sounds. But they were singles. So I'm backing that down even more to get it to match this kick even more. And sometimes that's what you want. But that's an, those are another couple ways that you can do that um, with those two EQs. Uh, another way to do it, uh, even an, uh, yet another way to do it, is to go into Trigger and to find a completely different sample. Um, and I do this a lot in reverse for this situation. So if I'm dealing with a band that's, say, like something like kind of Lorna Shore -esque, 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 esque, if they have breakdown sections, but they're really, really brutal, if they, you know, do a lot of 30 second notes um, and stuff like that, but then they have single note sections, uh, single kick sections, I'll do it in reverse. So what I'll do is I'll treat this kick like I normally would after I cut it out. Um, let's just grab the CQ, treat it like I normally would, let's see if it's good. Good, right there. So, um, so now, like, let's say that this is the majority of the song. It's not the majority of the songs. This is a bad example because it would have to be 30 second notes all the way through. So I'm not going to waste time uh, editing something to show you that. But like, let's say that this whole section was 30 second notes or something. What I might do when I got to this breakdown section, if that's what it was, is find a kick that's more articulate. Um, or EQ this kick to be more articulate. So like, say we're coming from like straight 30 seconds, like maybe it's like blast beats, like you know what I mean? And then we get to this section that's not, um, I might articulate this a little more, so. Little 3K, a little 8K, um, and it's not in this kick. But it's a little bit more, and obviously, like, this is going back and forth. Uh, I have, like, single hits in here. This isn't a, a great example of what I'm trying to show you, but um, I would sneak in a different snare sample or, or a different kick sample or a, uh, a differently EQ'd kick for that next section. 
So that's the second thing you can do is that. Uh, the third and final thing you can do is to try to find a sample that's comparable, um, that's similar to the kick that we have here. And that just doesn't have all the low end. So I just took this EQ off and I'm like adding a bunch of crap in on the low end to accentuate the point. But I could also go through uh, my trigger library and try to find, you know, a one shot or a TCI that, uh, that sounds comparable to the single kick, but has less um, uh, low end in it. And I've done that a lot as well. Uh, especially if, so this part is, is really kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of, you know, death Corey, metal Corey or whatever. And there are times, um, especially in like newer death core and stuff like that, like Lorna Shore type stuff where it's very death metally. And then it like, there'll be a breakdown. You know what I mean? And for stuff like that, like I'll use two different kicks for the song. So if like, you know, if the whole first half of the song is like this. And, uh, you know, I might treat this kick the way that I normally would. And then uh, backwards, uh, put a trigger on on here um, for like a like a breakdown -y part. So that when it gets to. It's just not the same treated kick, but it's on a separate track and just triggered um, in that different way. That's how I do it. This is what I do. And this handles those fast double kicks really, really well. And it keeps them seamless in the context of the song, which is the whole, the whole game. You don't want anyone to know that you've been messing around with the kicks. You just, you know, you want people to think that it's a seamless transition, but that's how you do it. That's how I do it, at least. So I hope that answered your question, and uh, happy mixing. I'll see you soon.